and welcome to um, Hurricane Preparedness 101. I don't know. Um, okay, so if you don't know, I live in southwest Louisiana on the Gulf Coast of Louisiana down at the bottom corner. And Hurricane Laura is set to head this way. So we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. We're trying to figure out our game plan. Um, but first we have to hurricane ready whatever our house so i'm just going to take you along on the journey i've never documented something like this before i don't know if we're staying or if we're evacuating i haven't decided yet um but i wanted to take you guys along to show you what it's like to um prepare for a hurricane so i've lived here my whole life i've done this many times uh every storm is different i've stayed for many storms including hurricane rita back in 2005 which was a pretty tough storm for our area we had no electricity for two weeks it was rough um so anyway like i said we haven't decided yet what we're gonna do so i'm gonna take you around show you how we prepare and then as the updates come we'll see what we decide to do out here on our back patio area we do have a lot of furniture jason is actually mowing the grass right now oh and we also have a trampoline <laughs> so we're going to take all these things apart and put them in safe locations um apparently what you do when a hurricane's coming is mow the grass because that's been the big joke on facebook as of yesterday and today um but for real the grass grows like crazy especially when it rains and it's supposed to rain all week so if you don't do it now you're going to end up with grass to your knees so after he's done with that we're going to work on all this stuff so as I mentioned, Hurricane Laura is currently um, moving through the Gulf. It's Monday, it's expected to make landfall late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning as a category two uh, hurricane. So I joked with somebody on Instagram earlier that I kind of base my hurricane categories off if I can run in them, which is totally dumb, I know. But I legitimately have done long runs in tropical storms and I did one once in a hurricane category one, so. When I mentioned Hurricane Rita back in 2005, um, I was a brand new nurse. I don't know how much of this I've shared of my story. I think I have on the blog, but I was a brand new nurse and my dad was in management at the time at the hospital that I work at. And he was like, well, if you're on the schedule, you're gonna go to work. So I showed up at work and the hospital was deserted. Cause at the time you have to understand, Hurricane Katrina had just happened a month before. So everybody was already freaked out about hurricanes. And then here comes this giant Hurricane Rita, which was a category five before it made landfall. It actually weakened to a category three, but what everybody saw, it weakened to a category three when it hit the coast. But what everybody saw, you know, preparing for it was, oh my gosh, here comes another giant storm towards Louisiana as a category five. So the hospital was deserted. We had moved almost all of our patients out except maybe four. They were in the ICU and they weren't ICU level, but that was like the safest place to put them. So I did stay. Um, I was a brand new nurse and had never been by myself, but I was pretty competent. I had been, that was September and I had graduated in May and I had excellent preceptors. Like I was pretty competent from right after graduation to be by myself. So it was fine. Um, but they put me in the ICU and assigned me a patient and we did shifts. We worked on shifts. They did assign us to different patient rooms that were empty, of course, the floor rooms. And that's where we slept. I actually found a, one of my best friends from nursing school. She worked the ER at the time. She was there too. So we actually got to room together, um, which was nice. So, Somebody had told me, and this is crazy, just the things that came out of Rita and the stories, It's I can't even share all of them in a timely manner, but one of the things that astounded me, okay, it's Southwest Louisiana, there's no electricity, there's no air conditioner, it is hot, and the walls were just like, the walls were just weeping. It was weird, they were just wet with moisture. Um, and so somebody had told me ahead of time to fill up your trash can with water. Well, at that point, I had never like been an adult and gone through a hurricane. My previous one, I was probably like maybe 12. So I didn't really know like all the ins and outs or remember all the ins and outs of those things. So I filled up my trash can with water. Okay, what am I gonna do with this? I don't know. Okay, so the hurricane hit Friday night and knocked out all the electricity. We also had no running water. So um, if you can imagine a bunch of people in you know, really hot temperatures with no air conditioner and it's humid as all get out, you kind of stink. <laughs> 
so one of the nurses on one of the other floors had devised this little bath in a bag method, which was actually how we used to bathe patients at the time. You would put like five washcloths in a bag and you would put a cap full of this soap and it was like a rub on soap and then rub off kind of thing. So you didn't have to get the patient all wet. That's how we took a bath for like legit three days. And in order to wash my hair, I decided to use that trash can water. Is that not the most disgusting thing you've ever heard? Well, maybe not ever, but when you're desperate, right? Like I was so gross, I had to do something. So I literally used a Dasani bottle of water to dump in the trash can, wet my hair, soap up my hair with actual shampoo and uh, rinse it out with the Dasani water. That hospital was so humid. I think I did that on Saturday and we left Monday morning and my hair was still wet when we left Monday. So the idea of do I stay or do I go comes in my mind. I still feel like I'm kind of traumatized from Hurricane Rita because that was one of the most craziest, wildest experiences I have ever gone through in my life. And driving around after, we didn't have electricity for like two weeks here in Southwest Louisiana. They postponed school for like a month. We actually ended up um, driving to my cousin's house in Dallas, Texas. And I'm when I tell you that that was the best shower I have ever taken in my life, I mean that was the best shower I have ever taken in my life. So this is why I'm having trouble like deciding what to do. Cause when they say like it's only a category two, well that still has like projected 100 mile an hour winds. I just feel traumatized from Hurricane Rita. And I didn't have a kid at the time. And since then I've, evacuated for some hurricanes and I've stayed for some hurricanes and the one I evacuated for the two actually I evacuated for was like why did I do that I should have just stayed at home but I didn't have a kid at the time now I have a four-year-old so I think we're about to go brave Walmart I did just go get gas I filled up my car with gas and topped it off um the gas station was a little crazy so we'll see how Walmart looks they said that they do have some bread <laughs> So I'm thinking I'm gonna buy stuff like non-perishable stuff, like um, maybe some jelly, some bread. I have peanut butter, uh, fruit snacks, you know, all those fun things. Um, and then we're just gonna wait till the seven o'clock update and see what the news says. And if we do have to evacuate, we can go to New Braunfels with my brother. I also bought a dog cage this morning because I did not have a cage for my Cocker Spaniel. So I might be needing a cage for her if we do decide to evacuate. So I have that now in case I need it. Okay. Off to Walmart we go. All I have to say is whoever decided that uh, the threat of a major hurricane during a pandemic was a good idea has lost their minds. This is crazy. 2020, I'm over you. <laughs> go away. In case you're wondering what a bread aisle looks like during an impending storm, well, there you go. <laughs> How about bottled water? Mm, nope. Well, we're done. Was it successful? Uh-huh. <laughs> and it actually wasn't as busy as I anticipated. There was no water, which we already bought that. Um, they had my type of bread, so that was good. But the rest of the store was not insane. We were pretty much in and out. So now I'm headed back home to help Jason with all the other things to put away, and then we'll go from there. We also have several sandbag locations throughout our city. This is one of them. You can see all the people filling up their bags. how Brayden helps prepare. Hi! <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> very empty but we are done it is like I said only Monday night the storm's not passing through till Wednesday night but tropical storm Marco is supposed to hit tomorrow so we wanted to be fully prepared before the rain started and there you are I even took the swings off the swing set so pretty much everything is bare 
Better be safe than sorry. All right, so both dogs have been given a bath just in case we do evacuate. And now it's bedtime. Huh, is it time for night night? Okay, let's go read books. Well, it's early Tuesday morning and it looks like Laura's path has now, um, well, Laura has continued to stay on the same path, but it looks like by now when she hits land, she's gonna be a category three. So I'm a little more freaked out. Um, a lot of my friends and coworkers are too, trying to figure out, do we leave, do we stay? I'm leaning more towards leaving now. Okay, this is dumb. There's two things. So growing up, I wanted to be a meteorologist. I love weather. And it was only when I found out that I would have to go away to LSU, which was several hours away from my home, to be a meteorologist that I decided to scrap that idea. So weather systems and stuff, I love them. I don't want to be in danger, but I love them. Um, and the other thing is, I'm, I, I know I said this already, but I'm seriously still traumatized from Rita, from Hurricane Rita. When you've been through a storm, and anybody who's been through a hurricane can attest to this, you remember the names of the storms that affected you. Um, and, and it's something that sticks in your mind forever. So Rita still kind of traumatizes me. I really don't want to go through that again. She was a three when she hit landfall and it was bad. We lost the roof on our house. My mom's, I can't remember if I said that. It rained into the house. We had mold of all different kinds of colors growing. I had to completely gut my parents' house and redo it. And like I said, I know every storm is different, but it just makes me nervous. So, it is. So the possibility of us ending up at my brother's is getting stronger and stronger as the forecast continues to come in. It is only Tuesday morning. At the moment, I'm supposed to be working Wednesday morning. The storm's supposed to hit that night, um, but I'm assuming they're gonna change that today. I don't know, we'll see. I really don't wanna get on the road at 12 noon or one o'clock on Wednesday and fight the traffic. That's another thing. I didn't evacuate for Rita until after the storm hit, and I just heard how crazy the roads were from people trying to evacuate. Um, and I just don't wanna be stuck in traffic for 13 hours for something that should take me five, so. All the, I'd rather do that than be safe, of course, but it's all these little things to consider. <sighs> Y'all pray for us. <laughs> all right, so it is two o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. We worked half a day at work today and we did decide to shut down tomorrow. Uh, they called a mandatory evacuation for my parish. Um, so Braden and I are packing, Jason's helping us pack up. We're getting important things up off the floor and onto the beds and yeah, I'm watching the Weather Channel, trying to follow it, follow the path of the storm. It's moved a little bit west uh, from us, but we still would be on the worst or the bad side of the storm. So we are still going to go, mainly just because I have him. I just want to be out. Um, but anyway, I literally came across these from Hurricane Rita. So my husband, he was my boyfriend at the time, worked at Movie Gallery. And Hurricane Rita completely took out this window. So as a joke, we went back after the storm just to check on things. And this was right down the road from my house. We took this picture. Well, next thing we know, here comes a cop pulling up to see what the heck we were doing. Well, we had to explain to him that um, my husband actually works there. And we were just taking pictures. And he showed him his badge. So anyway, crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy. And then this was my parents' house after Rita. Their roof was pretty much destroyed, rained inside of our house. We ended up with a blue tarp on our roof. Um, driving around town, this glass, this building is completely glass. All these windows were knocked out. There were lots of don't loot here signs. Um, this was my parents' yard. So they had a ton of trees and it basically just snapped them in half. You can just see the trees down everywhere. Um, Look at that. That's how strong the winds were. It's just crazy. And that was our roof after they finished. Um, just a lot of a lot of trees down. Here's our garage. We pretty much have the entire contents of our backyard in here. <laughs> just as we were packing up for our descent to New Braunfels, it started to pour down rain, which was Tropical Storm Marco. And then all of a sudden it stopped. Of course, we got soaked and then now it stopped. Um, Anyway, we're just about to hit the road. Okay, car is packed up. Dogs are in the car. We are off on our grand adventure. 
Got Pixie there. Madeline there. Car full of stuff. Here we go. Several people on my street have boarded up their windows. There's at least four houses, I believe, that I've seen that have their windows boarded. We don't have the stuff to do it, and it was kind of too last minute, so we didn't. But that is a thing. Well, just said goodbye to my parents, or my dad. My mom is still at work. She works in the hospital, so she's considered essential. This is scary. They're not leaving because my mom has to work. Um, but anyway, I can't do anything about it. So I told them if my house keeps electricity and theirs doesn't, they're more than welcome to come stay at my house. Um, even though we won't be home, whatever, no big deal. So here we go to New Braunfels and the Houston traffic looks insane according to Waze. So pray for us, wish us luck. <laughs> this should take five hours. We're going to see how long this trip is going to take. I've got my coffee and my snacks, so I should be good. <laughs> also, my sister-in-law just posted a graphic of the path of Rita with the flora on top and they're the same, same magnitude, same category. So yet another reason why I'm out. I'm not doing this again. So yeah. We made it to Katy, Texas, which is right outside of Houston to the Bucky's. It's kind of a joke. If you're on a Texas road trip, you've got to stop at Bucky's. Yeah, we're at Katy. At Bucky's? Yeah. This one is very excited about Bucky's. <laughs> Well, it's 10.30 p.m. We've been on the road since 4.20. We just made our third gas station stop to potty. Um, and we should be there in about an hour and 15 minutes, I guess. Brayden has done excellent. Madeline and Pixie have both done excellent. So it's been a pretty good trip. We just met a lot of traffic once we hit Baytown and then Houston and then Katy. And so now it's finally flowing where everybody can drive. Um, I love the Waze app. It took me around the traffic many times. So I feel like we're finally getting somewhere. So hopefully we'll be there soon. Oh, and I told my brother this too. I said, only in the South would you be in the process of evacuating for a hurricane while driving through the rain of a tropical storm. Explain that one to me. That's straight up 2020 for sure. You got anything to say? Brayden? You got anything to say? Uh-huh. What? I go to watermelon and then go home. You got some watermelon from Bucky's. Now we're going to Uncle B's house, not home, huh? We're going to Uncle B's house. Okay, and I'm going to see Rocky and Millie. That's his dogs. <laughs> Priority. <laughs> we made it to my brother's. It's after midnight. And now it's time to go to bed. Are you sleepy? Uh huh. Like the dogs are sleeping. With the dogs, yes. Oh boy. <laughs> Good night. It is now Wednesday morning from New Braunfels. It's a beautiful morning. This is our view from our back porch of my brother's house. Um, Hurricane Laura has strengthened or is going to strengthen to a category four. It's predicted to. So I'm not going to lie, I'm a little freaked out for all my friends and family who stayed behind um so we'll see what happens but anyway it's a beautiful morning here calm before the storm we're not getting any of the storm by the way none of it's gonna pass here which is good wow you can see that the fawn is hurt definitely we're gonna go over here <laughs> these poor dogs are gonna be so traumatized <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. You want out? <laughs> All right, so it is Wednesday midday, and the forecast for Laura looks like it is going to possibly strengthen to a Category 5, which is some of the reports that I'm hearing. So, um, kind of convinced my parents they needed to leave because they were going to stay. So, thank God they're coming up here where we are. And then my friend Kim wanted to leave too with her family. And so I kind of helped, I spent the morning helping her find a hotel. So they're going to Mississippi. 
seems like everybody's coming to Texas. So I recommended that she go the opposite way. So anyway, um, my other friends are in Texas. Everybody that I am close to, my coworkers and everything are out of Louisiana and they're safe. So that's all that matters. <sighs> I'm nervous as I'll get out still. I mean, now we just don't know what we're gonna return home to. They keep saying this could be worse than Hurricane Rita and I don't like it. So, and then Jason, my husband, um, works for a refinery so he his refinery makes gasoline maybe or oil or something um something along those lines to run vehicles and planes and all those things um so he is considered essential they try not to shut the plants down completely during hurricanes well he's on the ride out crew and now it looks so being away from your loved ones especially your husband is tough during these times a lot of people that live in southwest louisiana understand because that's kind of the work that a lot of people do in southwest louisiana is work at refineries so this is not uncommon um just makes me nervous for him so anyway i know they're going to keep him safe but you know just when you're not together during something like this is rough so anyway everybody else is going to be out of lake charles and We'll see what the storm does as it as it hits. Ooh, we ended up at a snake farm. <laughs> Animal World is what it's called. We're fascinated by snakes. I think they're disgusting. He's drinking water. Good job, bub. That got it. It did, but is the turtle eating it? Look, the turtles are eating it. The two turtles. Cool. Uh, I don't know, maybe. You can pet him. Sweet. It's 10.15 on Wednesday night. Hurricane Laura is hitting uh, Lake Charles now. I'm watching our ring doorbell camera and our outdoor camera and you can see every once in a while how bad the wind is. I really don't know that I'm going to get much sleep tonight, so um, once Braden to sleep, which I know it's way past his bedtime, but you know, sometimes on special occasions, which this is an interesting one, you don't um, sleep uh, as much. But anyway, okay, so once he falls asleep, which will be here in a minute, I'm going to take his iPad and that way I can watch my ring doorbell camera um, and my outside video from his iPad and then I can have our local news station on the computer like what you just saw and then I'll be able to use my phone to kind of you know scroll Facebook and see what other people are saying so I've got my little setup here just ready for the next couple hours because it's 10 15 by midnight they said uh, is when she should be like pretty good to Lake Charles and then I think by one one or two is when the eye is gonna hit Cameron Parish which is the parish right below me we live about 35 miles from the Gulf so let me show you what it looks like now so oop, that's what the satellite is showing now Their audio is kind of bad but anyway this is this is where she's at that's Lake Charles right there so it's definitely getting some wind and some rain um, from what I can see and we'll just continue to monitor one of the telltale signs too is these guys are actually our KPLC local news meteorologists and they evacuated them to Baton Rouge which is two hours away so they evacuated them to safety too so you know it's pretty rough when that happens. In current mood I'm watching the live stream on my computer. I've got Braden's the Sour Patch Kids <laughs> to keep me awake and I'm watching the camera on my house so my electricity is still on at least and I hope I didn't just jinx myself. It's about 11.40 and they said the eye is about 30 miles from Lake Charles at the moment. I don't know what the best part of this is. It just turned midnight. Now it's my birthday. <laughs> Happy 2020 to me. It's literally, the eye is literally five miles from the coast. that August 27th will be the official landfall date of Hurricane Laura. 
So I wanted to get this while I still could. It's about 12.20. Um, in Lake Charles right now, goodness. And although we don't have trees, you can kind of see the bush at the bottom. And uh, top right corner, you can see. Anyway, they said most of, not most of, a good bit of Lake Charles is without power now. So I wanted to film this while I still could. Some crazy stuff, man. All right, so it's a little after 1 a.m. Power went out about 12.40, 12.45-ish at my house. So I can't see the cameras anymore. Uh, looks like the eye is just about to pass right over Lake Charles. And as soon as it does, or a little bit after it does, I'm going to head to sleep. So that's where we're at at the moment. Hey, y'all. Good morning. Um, it's now Thursday morning. The storm has passed. I heard from Jason. He said that basically the windows of his truck are gone, um, but the truck is still structurally sound. We don't know about our house. There's no way to get around town. I'm watching a video right now of basically people driving around Lake Charles and it's the roads are impassable. Um, Jason said he lost power at the part of the uh, place he works about 2.30 this morning. So they did what they could and then that was pretty much it. So. Anyway, I'm seeing these pictures and things coming through. Orange Theory looks destroyed, um, which really breaks my heart because all these like small businesses just got back on their feet after Corona. And then now here comes this. I just don't, I feel so bad for the owners of businesses and stuff, man. I don't even know what my house looks like yet. Somebody also posted that pretty much all the roofs on the little the houses in the little community that I'm a part of are gonna need, all the houses in the community I'm a part of are gonna need new roofs. So I'm assuming that's something I'm going to need. Just life, I guess, life living in the Gulf Coast, but still sucks. Somebody just told me your birthday sucks. And I'm like, yes, it does, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so I have to share what just happened because this is, this is life and this is the, the way life goes sometimes. So we just went to the Disney outlet <laughs> in San Marcos, which is right outside of New Braunfels. And um, that guy from the parks voice came on, even though he was just reminding you to wear your mask. And I had to bend down in the store because I almost lost it. Like it felt so good to hear a familiar voice, which is dumb. And I know this is stupid. But in the grand scheme of things, like, I felt like I was home and that's a happy place. And I don't know what state my house is in at the moment. And just hearing his voice like made me feel home. I don't know how to explain that. And this is really dumb, but that's how I felt. So anyway, the Disney store brought a little smile to my face today, but a little tear to my eye too, because it's like a happy, and it's my birthday. Like all this in one day is just, is rough. Okay. I'm going to not be crazy anymore. I'm going back to normal, but I just had to share with y'all what just happened. <sighs> and that's the store we just visited. <laughs> Okay, so I just heard from Jason. A uh, majority of our damage was in the backyard. We lost our fence, we lost our swing set. We lost the doors to our shed. Uh, we lost a chimney on our house and then a lot of the front <clears throat> siding of the house is gone. Um, the roof is intact. It didn't rain inside my house. Windows are still intact. So all the other stuff can be replaced, thankfully. Um, I can't say the same about a lot of my neighbors. Most of them lost all the shingles to the roofs. You can see bare wood. Um, I'll insert the video of what Jason just sent me here so you can kind of see bits and pieces of what our backyard looks like. Um, I'm very grateful. I know it could have been so much worse. It just stinks. I just telling my mom all the work I put into this, repainting the fence, repainting the deck, painting the swing set during Corona, it's gone. Oh, and painting Jason's shed. It's gone. <laughs> Isn't that how life works sometimes? It's so crazy. All those things can be repainted though. I'll just do it again. <laughs>
it is Friday about 12 noon midday um, Jason has been released from his work um, not sure when he's gonna get to go back there's so much damage to his place so anyway he's gonna come up here and hang out with us for a couple days we might be here for the weekend we might be here for a few days into next week maybe even next Friday we're not a hundred percent sure um, It's hard to process it all, just looking at all the live videos and pictures of the devastation. If you can picture, man, I, don't, I mean, it's just so even hard to describe and explain it. Like, there's people driving around to show it off and like, or not show it off, but you know, like show what it looks like. And you can imagine like four, four and five lane roads with telephone poles just, or, or electricity lines all the way down like through the whole road people are driving around them on the sidewalks to get around which makes like one-way traffic it's trees down houses ripped apart even after hurricane Rita, like i just don't think i've seen devastation quite like this it's it's makes me want to throw up makes me want to be sick so anyway we don't know what we're going to do yet um my sister-in-law's dad graciously offered to let us borrow his generator, so we may be living on that for a while until we get electricity back, but then even, like, stores aren't open, you can't flush your toilet, gas stations to get gas for the generators, you know, I mean, it's a toughy, tough, touch and touchy and tough situation, but, I mean, I was telling my mother-in-law, like, even in all of the destruction, you know, God is amazing and he takes care of his people. And even when some things that you don't understand happen to you, you can still see the bright side or the glimmer of hope. That's what I like to look for in every situation is some glimmer of hope. And I mean, I am so grateful to still have a house, still have family, still have my loved ones, my friends. Um, out of my core group of friends, to be honest, including our parents, um... We pretty much all still have a home, which is not what some others can say. So I know we're fortunate um, and I'm so grateful. So we'll see what Jason getting here and where we go from there. We'll see what happens. So just as a quick update, uh, it is now Saturday and Jason made it here last night. So he is here. He drove five hours with his truck. Um, in a state that I'm gonna show you here in a few minutes. It kind of blows my mind. It was on the lot where he works and the windows, several windows busted out. And anyway, he drove it here like that, <laughs> but he made it. So that's all that matters. So anyway, now we're trying to enjoy just a little bit of normalcy before we go back to the war zone. Uh, we're taking Braden to the lake to go swimming. So this should be a pretty day. And yeah, that's what we're doing for now. Okay, so here is Jason's truck um, all along the entire left side of the vehicle are these little dings from stuff that were flung, flung at it during the hurricane. Um, so you can see, I hope you can see, it's really bright out here, so I'm not sure what you can see, but anyway, those are all there. And then his tires, I'm um, sorry, his rims are all the same way, just dings all over them. Um, he lost almost every window except the windshield is intact and one other window is intact but this one is definitely shattered he drove here for five hours with his vehicle like this and I'm not sure how he did that lost the window in the back it's just full of glass and stuff back here uh, lost this window as well something must have hit this handle cracked it and then there's a dent right here from what we're thinking the same thing hit the handle came uh it's looking like it started here and came down hit the handle and then hit this part um like i said the back window is out along with the um electrical work like the back the froster is is there just glass glass everywhere you can see inside um, I'm not sure how well you can see that window did not make it that window did so the front windshield and the passenger window did make it um, And yeah, that's pretty much the shape of Jason's truck So we're not sure what they're gonna say about it, but hopefully we can get it repaired and fixed 
for him. So I haven't seen our community yet. Today makes exactly a week since the hurricane came through. So I know a lot of cleanup has already happened, but we have a, a very long way to go. Um, so many communities from outside of Louisiana, Texas, and all over other parts of Louisiana have come in to help us and uh, cook food and give supplies. So I'm about to be a part of all of that. Um, we'll see, I'm supposed to go back to work either tomorrow or Monday, because we got our machine up and running. Jason should return to work sometime next week or the week after. So hopefully all this goes smooth and hopefully we get electricity back soon. Um, like I said, I haven't seen our community yet, so I'm kind of anxious to get home and check out my house because I also haven't seen my home yet either. So we'll see what all that looks like. We've got some passengers here. Say hi. Do you want to say hi? Uh-uh. Okay. All right. So I'll check in with you guys once I get closer to home. the damage on our road and to our house and it actually looks like our roof damage is a little bit worse than we initially thought which is not good um, so we have a company coming sometime soon to put a blue tarp on our roof when I tell you guys that the pictures and video that you see on TV and the internet and whatever does no justice to this I absolutely mean it does no justice to this this literally looks like a literal war zone, like absolute destruction. Driving through the neighboring towns to get home, my heart just broke for our community. Absolutely broke. This is probably one of the worst things I have ever been through in my life. And I don't think it's ever gonna be the same. And I'm not going to ugly cry again. I already did that today. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. No more ugly crying. but Or at least not on camera. But um, anyway. <sighs> this is rough, y'all. I mean, you couldn't see through neighbors' like yards before. And now it's just... If, oh, I'm going to show you. Hang on. Let me go in my backyard. Alright. So once upon a time, the entire back back part of our neighborhood was fenced in and you could not see this way. Every single person had a wooden fence. I sent Jason looking for our mailbox and he just found it. I was hoping it was still together with whatever mail had come in on Wednesday, but no such luck. Uh, that was probably four houses down. Anyway, also same here. You could not see through neighboring yards. And yes, this is my backyard something else that blows my mind. These metal poles are cemented in the ground. 
she literally snapped metal poles. There's other spots where the concrete is coming up, just straight up uprooted. Mind boggling y'all, absolutely mind boggling. Living in Southwest Louisiana, having gone through my fair share of storms, I have never ever experienced anything like this ever. It also took Jason's shed and completely lifted it off its foundation. So it's not even on its foundation anymore. So it is now Saturday, September 5th. We've been home for three days. Um, my two biggest complaints about all of this is it is hot, y'all. It is August. I'm sorry. It's September in Southwest Louisiana. It is hot. If you're one of my Disney people, think Disney in July where it's hot and muggy or maybe even August. The same weather where it's hot and muggy and sticky and nasty. Yes, that's us. No air conditioner unless you have a generator. And even then, it doesn't even cool it down below 80 during the day. At night, we're lucky to get it to 76 in the room that we're sleeping in um because it's in it's not in actually an enclosed room it's just the way we had to set it up but anyway that's number one complaint the heat number two is the mosquitoes i don't know what laura dragged in because i thought the mosquitoes were bad before but holy cow they're huge and there's millions of them and they're terrible so that's my two major complaints but as a bright light and a ray of sunshine and all of this i do have to say that Humanity in itself has been shown these last couple of days to me and it, it makes me have hope in the world. Uh, so many people and organizations and groups have come forward and driven here from hours away to cook us food. Um, just like all along the main road of my town driving home today or driving around whatever you'd see tents popped up and it was like free lunch from 11 to 2 or free supplies, free ice, free water free drinks, whatever. It's just amazing. Uh, the National Guard is here with, um, they are giving out MREs, which thankfully we haven't had to eat yet because all these other groups have been so nice and gracious with their food. Um, they're giving out tarps, MREs, water and ice, so that's nice. And then Convoy of Hope is here. Um, also giving out supplies and food. Samaritan's Purse is here helping up with cleanup and yards and stuff and tree, you know, removal and all of that. So it's been an interesting time uh definitely definitely 2020 <laughs> to say the least but um you know it's all a part of life in the process um while we were cleaning up our fence today you know i kept thinking about the things i'm reading on facebook people saying like i can't go through this again i'm done um why do i still live here i'm moving away and you know it just got me to thinking um like what are the chances that in one lifetime you will go through two major events like this only 15 years apart hurricane rita was huge just Lord, hurricane Laura did way more damage than rita did bigger storm actually they are saying that laura is the largest and most powerful storm to ever hit the louisiana coast ever on record so um that's what we're enduring but you know i'm not one to just like and, and if you are that's great this is not my personality i'm not one that can just like pack up my whole life and just move across the country. I admire people who can, but that's just not me. My home is here. My family is here. My friends are here. My church is here. My life is here. My schools were here. My work is here. Jason's work is here. Like, I just, this is home to me. And hurricanes are something I've grown up with. Although, I, like I said, I've never experienced anything like this before, but this has just been my life. And so, I just don't feel like I can pack up and move. We have been jokes about moving where my brother lives, but um, I just don't think I can do it. So anyway, this is home. This is where I belong. This is my life. So I'm gonna keep on keeping on until um, whatever. So <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for following this very long Hurricane Laura vlog. Um, I know that I talked a lot and went over a lot of things but I do appreciate you if you're still watching and following along with this it's like I said it's been quite an experience I just wanted to document it for the future I can come back and watch and say oh yeah I remember that yep <laughs> so anyway I hope you are doing well I hope you have a great day and I hope the Disney vlogs can resume soon I am signed up for princess so I should be there 
uh, in February. Crossing fingers, let's hope so. And yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Y'all take care. Bye.